This video is going to look at the important concept of finding a relationship between variables with what we call correlation and regression. So that's where our question stems from. Our question is, how do we test for a relationship between variables. And the first thing we're going to start with is just getting a visual of how the two variables are related using what is called a scatter plot. A scatter plot is basically just a graph of all of our data, so it's best illustrated with an example. Let's say a researcher collects a sample of the number of pages a person reads based on their age. So we've got, let's call the first column their age, and the second column the pages that they read. So we've got a 14-year-old who read 40 pages. Uh, there's a 21-year-old who read 45 pages. They asked a 33-year-old who read 92 pages. They asked a 45-year-old who read 167 pages. And they asked a 63-year-old who read 171 pages. The idea of a scatter plot is if we call the first column the independent variable x, and the thing that we think changes based on the independent variable or the dependent variable y, we should be able to graph these to get a visual of how they relate to each other. Let's go up by tens on the x-axis. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years. And on the y-axis, we'll go up by 30s, 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180. And so we'll make a point for each one of these. And this is going to be what becomes our scatter plot. So at 14 years old, we'll go up to 40 pages, which is right about where that blue dot is. Then we've got a 21-year-old who goes 45 pages, so maybe a little bit higher. Then there's a 33-year-old who's going to go up to 92 pages. A 45-year-old who will go up to 167 pages. And a 63-year-old who will go up to 171 pages. And so we kind of can see a relationship here. But before we get into that, Let's make sure our scatter plot is complete, because a good scatter plot will have titles and labels. So the bottom represents the age. Going up represents the pages. And we might say pages read by age for the title. And what we can see is the dots aren't exactly in a straight line, but they do kind of trend upwards. It seems that as age goes up, the number of pages goes up. And so we've got this relationship starting to establish visually. Now, our calculators can also make these scatter plots. So I want to show you how to make this exact same scatter plot on the calculator. So first, I'll write out the instructions. Then we'll go ahead and do it. First, we have to enter the data. And the way we enter the data is you'll start by hitting the Stat button. And then you'll select Edit. And then you can put x in list 1 
and y in list 2. Once you've entered the data, you're ready to make the graph. And the way we make the graph is first you'll have to hit the second button. And then you'll have to hit the y equals button. Because above y equals, the second feature is stat plot. It's for graphing statistics. And you're going to go into the first stat plot and make sure it is on. Make sure you select the scatter plot, which is going to be the dots. And then you want to select what list you want, L1 and L2. Once you're done with setting up the stat plot, you'll hit the Zoom button. And you'll select Zoom Stat, which will center you right on the statistics. So let's look at doing that on our calculator. First, we have to enter in our data. To do that, we'll start by hitting the Stat button, selecting Edit. And there's already stuff in these lists. To clear it out, I'll highlight the list name and hit Clear Enter. And that clears out the list. Clear Enter. And then I'll put in L1 my x's. My x's were 14, 21, 33, 45, and 63. And then L2, I'll put my y's, 40, 45, 92, 167, and 171. Now that I've entered in the data to set up the graph, we'll hit second in the stat plot button, which is the y equals button. Option number one, we're going to make our scatter plot. First, you want to make sure you've turned it on by selecting on. There's lots of graphs. You want to make sure the dotted one, which stands for the scatter plot, is selected. And then L1 and L2 are my list. We're ready to see it. We'll hit the Zoom button. And near the bottom, maybe not the bottom bottom, there it is. Number 9 on my calculator is Zoom Stat. What that does is that centers my graph around my statistics. And you see we end up with much the same graph we had before, the two dots next to each other, a dot, a high dot, and then another dot over to the side. And so now we've got our scatter plot on our calculator. But sometimes we're interested in more than just the dots. What we might be interested in is, can we draw a line that kind of models through the center of the data a best fit close to the dots? That is what we call our regression equation. So let's take a look at the regression equation, also known as the line of best fit, also known as the least squares line. Basically, a line that models those dots as close as possible. Well, since it's a line, we know the equation of the line is going to be y equals some y-intercept plus the slope times x. And in linear regression, we call that y equals a plus bx. A little different than algebra, where you probably learned y equals mx plus b. Similar setup, but now we use a for the y-intercept and b for the slope. The equations for a and b are quite complex. So we're going to have the calculator do our work for us to calculate the equation. And the way the calculator can do that is we actually run what's called the linear regression t-test. So we'll hit stat. We'll scroll over to tests. And we'll scroll down to the lin reg t-test. We can also graph it on our scatterplot graph 
by hitting the y equals button and then typing in the equation. So let's do that for our age versus pages example. So pulling back up my calculator, we're going to hit the Stat button, scroll over to Test, and near the bottom, you will see Lin Reg T Test. Make sure you do Lin Reg T Test, not any of the other Lin Reg stuff. Lin Reg T Test, and hit Enter. L1 and L2 are x and y. Uh, we're going to always select the not equals to button for our len reg t test. And then if we hit calculate, it gives us a lot of information. We're going to come back to some of this information in just a minute. But specifically, what we're interested in right now, if I scroll down, we see a is negative 5.523, and b is 3.08. Three. I'm going to go ahead and round those to two decimal digits. So A is equal to negative 5.52, and B is equal to 3.08, which means if I put that into my equation, Y equals A, which is negative 5.52, plus B, 3.08 times X. This equation models as close as possible my scatter plot. If I hit y equals, I can type that in. Negative 5.52 plus 3.08x. The x button's right next to the stat button. And when now when I hit the graph button, what I'll see is I have a line that goes right through the middle of my dots. Seems to model that quite well. We have a line of best fit. The nice part about the line of best fit is I can use it to estimate values I don't have. Let's estimate the number of pages read by a 30-year-old. If we go back to the original data, we don't have 30 in here. But age is my x value. So if I plug in the age for x, we should be able to get a good estimate for what that 30-year-old is reading. So y equals negative 5.52 plus 3.08x. x is the age, my 30-year-old. And when I put that into my calculator, I end up with 86.88 pages. So round that maybe to 87 pages, we would expect this 30-year-old to read. One important thing to note about using the regression equation to estimate points is it only works within the domain of the problem. It only works between the high and low values. We can't estimate values outside of that range. So for example, this would be bad. Could we figure out a 3-year-old? Well, mathematically, it would make sense if 3 is the age, we'll just plug 3 in for the x. And we get negative 5.52 plus 3.08 times our 3-year-old. And that's going to equal to 3.72. So do we conclude that a 3-year-old is reading 3.72 pages? Probably not. There's not a lot of 3-year-olds that can read anything maybe their name. 
The problem is, is the three-year-old is outside of our data. Our data had a low of 14 and a high of 63. We're only going to estimate values between those numbers. If we go outside of the data, the model can very easily break down. And so we want to be careful not to take the model further than it's designed to go. All right, I want to look at one more thing with regression and correlation. And that's what we call the correlation coefficient. And this is where the hypothesis test comes in, though we won't do it nearly as formally as we have in other contexts. The idea of the correlation coefficient is I have this red line on my graph that goes kind of through the blue dots, but not perfect. Well, how good of a model is that line of best fit? Is it close? Is it far off? What can we know from that line? This is what the correlation coefficient measures. And we have a special variable r that we use for the correlation coefficient. And it tells us two things about the graph. It tells us the strength and direction. First, r is between negative 1 and positive 1. We say if r equals 0, that tells us that there is no relation. No relation between the x and the y. The dots are completely random. And our line of best fit just has to go straight through the middle. Uh, but that doesn't even model it well. There is no relationship. Everything's random. If r equals positive 1, what that means is we have a perfect positive relation. Positive means we're going uphill. So now we're going to have these dots going uphill. And the line goes right through all the dots uphill perfectly. That would make r equal to 1. Similarly, r equals to negative 1 means we have a perfect negative relation. Or we're going downhill. So now there's a bunch of dots going downhill. And the line goes right through the middle of all the dots going downhill. Now, there's no such thing as perfect data. So r very rarely is 0, 1, or negative 1. Usually, it's somewhere in between. r might be negative 0.78, or r might be positive 0.23. And the closer it is to 0, the less relationship we have. And the closer to 1, the more likely we have a relationship. And the way we determine if there's a relationship is we do a t-test. It's called the Lin Reg t test, linear regression t test, which gives a p value that tells if the relationship between the two variables is significant. A p-value less than alpha of 0.05 will mean that we have a significant relationship. But r works hand in hand with this p-value because r tells the strength of the relationship.
r could be positive or negative. But what we'll say is if it's between 0 and 0.1999999, the strength is considered to be very weak. There might be a relationship because the p-value tells us it's significant. But it's very weak below 0.199999. From 0.2 to 0.3999999, we say it's just a weak relationship. 0.4 to 0.59999 is a moderate relationship. But we like to see r bigger than 0 0.6. 0 0.6 to 0.7999 means we have a strong relationship. And on occasion, we end up between 0.8 and 1.0, which would be a very strong relationship. In addition to r telling us the strength of the relationship and p telling us whether or not the relationship is significant, there's a third variable that we look at in analyzing correlation and regression, and that is r squared, which we get by squaring the r value. r squared tells the amount of variance, actually not variance, we'll say variation, in the dependent variable. That is explained by the independent variable. How much of the changes in that dependent variable are explained by changes in the independent variable versus other factors. This whole concept of the correlation coefficient is probably best seen by going back to our example. So let's go back to our age versus pages example. We can run the len reg t-test on our calculator to find these important values, the t-value, the r, the p-value, and the r-squared. So going back to our calculator, let's run it one more time. I'll hit stat over to test, and I'm going to do the len reg t-test. My numbers are all already in there. So when I hit calculate, we see our test statistic, the t, is 5.09. We see that gives us a p-value of 0 0.0146. And if I scroll down, we will see an r-value. r is 0.9466. And r-squared is 0 0.896. Let me transfer all those values over here, and we'll talk about what they mean. So we had a t value of 5.09 when we round it, which resulted in a p value of 0 0.0147. Also, there was an r, our correlation coefficient, of 0 0.947. And r squared, it says, was 0.896. With linear regression, the null hypothesis is always that the relationship, which we represent with the Greek letter rho, looks like a p, equals 0. That means there's no relationship. The alternative is that rho is not equal to 0 or that there is a relationship. And we can see in our case, we're going to make a decision 
because the p-value is less than 0.05, to reject the null and make a conclusion that there is significant evidence to conclude the alternative hypothesis, which says there is a relationship. There is a relationship between age and pages read. But we can expand on that conclusion a bit and say, because r is equal to 0.947, which if we scroll up in our notes, we see that puts us in the very strong category between 0.8 and 1.0, we can say the relationship is very strong. We can even go one step further and say, because r squared equals 0.896, we can claim that 89.6% of the variation in the dependent variable, or in pages read, is explained by the independent variable, or by h. And so you see, we don't end up with the traditional hypothesis test going through all the same exact steps we have before, but the pieces are still there that we decided, based on our p-value, that there is a significant relationship. Based on our r, we can determine how strong the relationship is. And based on our r squared, we can say what percent of the variation is explained by the independent variable. So that's what we're looking at today, determining is there a relationship. If there is a relationship, what that relationship is based on the equation y equals a plus bx, and also drawing the scatter plot so we can get a visual to see that relationship. We'll look forward to seeing you in class so we can look at these scatter plots, linear regression, and correlation a bit further.